Ford Coochie and a racing cam and a supercharge. Look at Buddy Hot Rod and Large. She's a hot rod. She's a hot rod. She's my hot rod, baby. Thing about uh, the car battery, I would say if you're going to store the car for longer than a month, I would remove the disconnect the battery and physically remove the battery from the car. Don't just put it on the cement ground. Put it on some 2x4s on the ground and uh, charge that battery up w- uh, once a month. I know they have the, uh, the battery maintainers that you could plug in and leave it on for days and days, but I, I, I'm kind of hinky about that. I never like leaving something plugged in that long when I'm not in the garage. Yeah, exactly. I don't like anything electronic going on in my garage when I'm not there. Exactly. I'm not wild but, but about I, that. But I would charge the battery up every month. Like maybe I, I do mine like the beginning of the month so I can remember. And uh, then that way the battery won't fail on you. And, and then you can put that back in the car and you could uh, be good to go whenever you're ready to go. Absolutely. And the connections will stay clean and you won't get acid all over the place. Yeah, yeah. First clean the battery off with some baking soda and water like out in the yard somewhere. Yeah, because they have off. a tendency to sweat. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, clean that all up, and then, like I said, store it on top of some uh, those 2 by 4s Yeah, you can't set it on concrete. Concrete will suck the charge right out of it. Exactly, exactly. So that's why I put a couple of, make sure you have it so it doesn't tip over there, you know. No sweat. And, well, and, and about the Tesla, the, I heard a report, you, know, you talked about that guy that got killed. Uh, he, I guess he liked his car so much, he, he, he nicknamed it, he called it Tessie. He <laughs> called it Tessie. Now, that's true. And, and he had, uh, they said that in the, Past six years, he got eight speeding tickets. Now I don't know if the car was in uh, uh, control where he drove it then, or if it was in remote control. But they said he got eight speeding tickets in the past six years. See, that's supposed to be impossible. And if, then if Tesla's the car's also, Tesla's saying that they think that the accident was caused because the semi truck, the side of the truck was white. The trailer was white. It was a clear, sunny day. And the cameras on the car got confused and thought that the white of the semi truck was part of the cloudy or the, the, the sunny day, and and that the he did not he trusted the car so much he didn't react and hit the brakes. God, you know what? If that isn't an Elon Musk cop out, it's I have I've never heard one. <laughs> Honestly, John, thanks for calling, buddy. All right, all right, bye. thanks, buddy. Yeah, that's a that's a cop out if I ever heard it, Elon. Just knock it off. Let's go to Mikey on line 75. What's up, Mikey? Hey, Big G, how you doing, man? You know what? If I was any better, I don't know what I'd do. Hey, Big George, you know, I learned a new term over the last uh, couple weeks. Is it clean? No, of course. <laughs> uh, it really related to cars. Oh. You know, I, I remember telling you, Big George, about two years ago, uh, one of my family members bought a brand new vehicle, GM. And about three months after she purchased the vehicle, she received a letter in the mail stating that there may be a possibility of a water pump, let's just say malfunction, if she were to see a leak within the next 10 years or 150,000 miles, they would replace that water pump free of charge, but do not bring the vehicle in until you see, you know, those conditions. Well... Two years after that fact, like I said, I talked to you two years ago, she noticed the leak. She called, told me, she says, you have seen this teeny spot on the garage floor, blah, blah, blah. So she called the dealership. She, she referred, you know, she explained the problem to the service advisor. And she used the term recall, she, the family member. The, the service advisor, oh, no, no, it's not a recall. It's a special policy. <laughs> So now when you it's know a secret, double bad. secret probationary recall, Mikey. Exactly. You ever hear that term, Big George? No, yeah, they, they, they call them uh, customer satisfaction campaigns. They call them uh, technical, technical, re- technical in-house repairs. They have a lot of names for them. But if you go in, and they won't tell you, but if you go in and, and complain, oh, we can fix that for you under a warranty. Right. you got to ask. Right. But they, see, see how they're getting away from even... See, terminology means a lot. So there, it's not a recall. It's a special policy. So when you talk all these recalls, but how many, quote, unquote, special policies are out there well, in ca- addition to the, quote, recalls that Big George talks Mike, about? Mike, they call it that so that you go, oh, aren't you wonderful to take care of this for right. me? Right, right. You should have fixed it in the beginning. And, and, and check this out, Big George. And then they tell her, well, 
despite the fact that you got the letter, despite the fact that you see the symptoms that you stated would possibly happen, they told her, well, first what we got to do is we got we to gotta do a diagnostic test, and then if what you say is the problem is not the problem, then we got to charge you the, let's just say, $79.95 for the, for the diagnostic test. You know what I told her? I said, that's great, wonderful. But what about the leak on the floor that you were talking about? You know, you see what I'm saying? So they try to dissuade It's in the letter, Mike. It says, if you see this leak, take it in. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But, but I just think this is exactly why people hate politics. Oh, absolutely. Bureaucracies. Mike, I got to tell you, we had a lady in the shop uh, yesterday with a GM uh, Acadia or one of those, right. the big SUVs. And she, every, she said, you know, every once in a while my steering is gone, and then it's back, then it's gone, then it's back. It's, Whoa. I started nosing around in my computer and my information uh, data bank. Sure enough, there's an in-house satisfaction campaign right. for customers up to... Not a recall. Yeah, oh, God, no. <laughs> up to 150,000 miles. Same letter. For this, for this particular problem. Right, right. It's, the, it's just the game. That it's a game, Big George. It's all politics, and guess what? If you don't need it, they don't, and they don't want to put it out there that this happens on those cars. Right. And one final thing, George, and, they, and you know, being a, you know, just freshly, you know, into the workforce, college graduate, you know, they work Monday through Friday. So she said, well, I'd like to get it done on a Saturday. Well, we prefer Monday through Friday. So my question to you is, worked in the dealerships at times, are the mechanics, generally speaking, on weekends, are they ASA certified as well? Or are the good guys during the week? Or am I just overthinking? Okay, you're going to have you're going to have qualified mechanics Monday through Saturday. Okay. You're not going to have a problem, even Sunday if they're open. Okay. Because they, they, sh they, they rotate their shifts. Right. But I guarantee you, the top of the line ace mechanics in that dealership work Monday through Friday days. Right. There's no afternoons, no nights, and no weekends for those guys. But do they've, think, earned, they've earned that. But do you think those, do, those, those guys would probably get the gravy jobs, though? They're well, not, absolutely. They're, even, so even during the week, they're not going to give the top-of-the-line mechanic to do the water pump. They're gonna no, give those, they're, they're gonna not going to give him the recall. Right. The recall has a specific labor amount on it, and it's usually not enough okay. to okay. cover so it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So the guy's taking a beating on it if, when he's doing it anyway. Exactly. Okay. See, that's always what I wonder. That's what I brought up to you once before about that Rico. How how the dealerships get paid because that seems bizarre. So then you explain to me there is a different. Uh, oh yeah. Profit margin, if you will, on that. Oh, absolutely. They don't want to do those recalls, and when they're in there, don't be surprised that they pull the wheels and check the brakes and everything else. Try to sell you everything they can. So nine times out of ten, even if she would have took it in there on a Tuesday morning, you're not going to get John Doe, who's been a mechanic for 45 years. Changing a water pump. Unless there's absolutely nothing else to do, Mike. Unless, well, I, I doubt that because that's that's where their profits at, Big George. You know that. Oh man. yeah, man. They're you know they're gonna they're gonna play the game their way. That, oh, okay, Big George. I thought I'd let you Thanks, share Mikey. that information, my friend. Thanks for bye calling, bye. my friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a true story. We had a, we had a, a big Chevy in the uh, just Friday, and by the time we got done looking it up, I didn't actually find the the recall. Uh, the recall, and it's not a recall, but Ronnie found it. It was buried, and it was there, and it said, hey. <laughs> if this happens, you're covered, only don't tell nobody. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I guess uh, Dan Kalzinski wrote a nice article about Ileana. I don't know if it was on today's paper, <clears throat> excuse me, um, today's paper or yesterday's, but I think it's today, today's in the, uh, in the Times. Well, I got to tell you, my friend, absolutely and positively, you moved out at the right time. We got no racing here at all. Man, my friend. I Raceway's know. gone. Ileana's gone. You got to drive all the way out to Grundy, and now I heard that's going to be gone. And you got some guy who's going to reopen the US 30 drag strip. I don't think that's going to happen. George, and you and I, deeply inside, know that's impossible. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's a neighborhood. Yeah. That, that's I a know. neighborhood. Well, anyway, yeah. we, we're dying for racing out here. The only thing I got be honest with you, is out there at the US 30 in Joliet. Oh, they yeah. have a dirt track, they have a they have a circle track, and they have a drag strip. Yeah, yeah. And at the dirt track, they're having all kinds of fun stuff this whole summer. Yeah, I wish they paved that, though. <laughs> yeah, really, me too. I like to see a little racing instead of demolition derbies all the time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if I want to see demolition derby, I go out, uh, 
I go out on a Dan Ryan. That's a demolition derby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Hey, hey George, I uh, texted earlier about uh, my buddy uh, Dave Sapolsky. Wow, what a raw deal he got. I guess I shouldn't say that on air, but uh, Sapolsky with the, with the baseball team. What the baseball team, team is this? What are you talking about? You know how old? How about the, the Chiefs leaving the Hamming? The baseball team. Oh. Yeah, baseball you know what? I saw that. You need to call Jed on that one because he knows all about that story. Yeah. He's the guy. You give yeah. him a call one morning and, and no, 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 rattle no, no. his cage. Because I, I, I know, I know your, your brother, uh, McDermott, listens to this radio station all the time, <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, you're going to get me kicked off again. <laughs> All right, you have a good one, and, and, and try and behave yourself out there in California. Will you, hey, Ronnie? Hey, I, I will, too. Hey, happy fourth, and tell, uh, tell my future ex-wife, Candy, happy fourth. I will do it. Thank you. Happy happy fourth to Ronnie the Wrench. I'm thinking that just thinking maybe the tavern's opened a little early out there today. 